Hi, my name is Sean Cowgill, and uh, I just got out of federal prison uh, about 10 months ago, and I'm doing this video today on what life is like after prison, and I'm in my 50s. I also went to a federal prison camp, which is a lot different than most of your hardcore prisons that are full of gangsters and bank robbers and all that. It's a lot different. I was at Club Fed. I did a white collar crime. I did false tax preparation. I ripped off the government. I stole a bunch of money from the IRS. And I went to prison for 52 months. Um, and now I'm having a tough time. Today, I'm just, today's, I'm, I'm feeling a little sorry for myself today. I'm realizing how hard it is at 56 years old, even to find a job and the way people treat you when you get out of prison. Um, so, you know, I, I've been, I made a few videos, my first day in prison and all that, and uh, I was trying to help out the guy who's on pretrial and is facing going to prison, maybe he got indicted, and the white collar guy who's gonna go to a camp or a low. And my whole point is not to be scared, you're gonna make it through, nobody's gonna beat you up, and nobody's, you don't have to be anybody's bitch. And you know, as a matter of fact, I got, I got a message from my guy yesterday on my about my YouTube video. We swapped phone numbers. We talked on the phone yesterday. He's got to turn himself in to Florence tomorrow to the camp, and he's scared like I was. And I was able to maybe put a little hope in this guy's life that your life's not over. It's just part of the journey, and you're gonna get through this. And you're gonna come out alive, and 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 the hardest part is over. Going to prison. It's finally over. You get indicted, you go to pretrial. I was on pretrial for four years, not knowing if I'm getting 10, 20 years in prison or probation, and nobody gets probation. I mean, maybe one out of 100 people get probation. When the feds have got you indicted, you're going to prison. I, I, that's, that's life, it's something you gotta face, and I've been trying to make some videos on that. I got one about the pretrial stress. Today's video is about what happens after prison. So, yeah, I was holding up this picture because, yeah, I graduated from the RDAP program. That's a, a residential drug and alcohol program that they have in federal prison. Um, it's not available to the penitentiary, but it's available to the other three level levels, the camps, the lows, and the mediums. And they, and they give you a year off your sentence. They also let you go out early to go to a halfway house, six months on that. And... Um, and going to prison could be tough. So, unlike, you know, a bank robber, a guy who robs a liquor store, a guy covered in tattoos, you know, and these guys you see that did 20 years in prison, um, I'm not like that, okay? I didn't get hard, I didn't come out. We didn't have any politics. I, I didn't have to, I could, you, you could be on your own. You don't have, there is no joint gangs to join in a, in a camp. A couple of, Couple groups that think they're a gang, but <laughs> anyways, that's another video. Um, it's more like going to high school. Um, and the thing is, I almost wish I robbed a liquor store, robbed a bank, and got out of prison. Because it seems to me like society's more willing to forgive a guy like that and help him out and give him a job than a white collar guy. I did wire fraud. So my trust is gone. It, it's like us white collar guys, we get, okay, we've already lost respect from our family and our employers and our coworkers and the society who knew us before we went in. We get our name in the papers and, no, and you find out who your friends are, they all back away. Family doesn't want to talk to you. You know, I had a fiance who left. Um, you know, just people leave your life, they run away. And then you go to prison and then you get out and you think, well, it was only a white collar crime. They're gonna hire me. Nobody's gonna. It's it's not like that. Wow. To build trust back up, because they're looking at me like I'm a weasel. I'm a scumbag. You look at all these Trump's friends who go. Oh, this Michael Cohen guy. I thought he was a scumbag to begin with, but now he's out and stuff. But nobody's gonna trust him. Nobody wants to be part of that guy's life. I mean, maybe his family does and stuff. And I'm way down on the bottom of the white collar crime. I just did some tax preparation fraud and, and the guys I did it for were drug addicts and homeless guys. I wasn't a big time stockbroker, banker, lawyer, 
you know, I wasn't a whole high profile. I didn't have millions of dollars. I've been working in restaurants all my life for 30 years. And I've worked hard and made my way up to a chef and a restaurant manager. And with all that hard work and the 30 years of experience, I can't find a job. But it's also a pandemic. I had a job at the halfway house when I got out for a little while and I was I was cooking at a drug program. I was getting 19 bucks an hour. It was out in San Francisco, but that all closed down. And now I've been on an unemployment for like nine, eight, nine months. I apply all the time for jobs, you know, but I get this criminal record. Um, I had some interviews for some restaurant management jobs where they came down, okay, we're going to do a background check. You know, and, and I, I, before I even start an interview, even on my resume, I put down that I've done some time in federal prison because I don't want to waste my time going through three interviews and then finally uh, having to tell somebody about your criminal past it's on my resume it's not in big bold letters but it's in a little it's in a little paragraph about myself and i know it's stopping me and i'm just throwing my resume in another pile and i'm already in my 50s you know and how hard it is to go to prison in your 50s and i lost everything i had which i didn't have much because i've never been able to get ahead in life anyways i've had a drug and alcohol problem all my life and i've already lost family and friends and, and loved ones because of the drugs and alcohol and I've been at plenty of drug rehabs you know I finally got almost four years clean now and I've been in a couple programs in prison and on pretrial and uh, and it's tough the way people I wish I was a bank robber I wish I was full of tattoos and hard and it seems like guys like that at least they get the heart the sympathy the the they get, they get second chances. People will hire that guy on. They want to see him change his life. They trust a guy that's been a bank robber or in a gang all his life and done 20 years in, in a penitentiary. It seems like, to me, they'll trust hiring a guy like that rather than a weasel, scumbag, manipulator of the system, the guy who did white-collar crime. i I, I got to work 10 times as hard to get somebody's trust. Especially somebody who doesn't know me. And family. My mom's side of the family wants nothing to do with me. My dad's side of the family has taken me back. And I don't even know how much they trust me. But they trust me enough to call me all the time. And they're, you know, I'm, I'm welcome there at Thanksgiving and stuff. But um, do people really trust you? And the people I meet. And, you know, I live in a clean and sober house here. With a bunch of guys that are, you know, doing AA thing. And, um... And there's even a thing when they find out you've been to prison, you know. And then when they find out I've been to federal prison camp and I, and I tell them it's not like a real prison. We had no fences. You know, and they look at me like, okay, we, we better hide our, our, our uh, social, you know, don't leave a credit card around this guy. Don't leave your driver's license. Don't leave your social security number where this guy can find it. You know, um, the guy who robbed the liquor store, they're, good, they're more likely to trust him. A guy like me... You know, they're, everybody's worried about it. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them. But it's tough, you know. So in federal prison, I took every possible course you can get. I, I just want to show you. Here's uh, my RDAP certificate. Here's a certificate for uh, another drug education abuse program I took. Uh, this is a non-residential drug program I took. This is uh, one of the ACE classes. Uh, so this one is... Uh, Trading options. I don't know. I don't remember that one. Um, ancient Rome. Uh, film review. <laughs> uh, getting out by going in. That's one of the re-entry courses they had to take. They try to prepare us for the outside, but they don't. These classes aren't the best. Inbound marketing. Um, wealth management. Uh, a job fair. Oh, they took me to a job fair on the outside to do some interviews. Because our campers, we get to go out of the camp. So uh, we went to the town of Pueblo. And uh, there was a little community center there. And it was a job fair. And regular people were there from the public. And they didn't even let us borrow a shirt and tie. And we had resumes. And uh, it was more for practice. But they wanted us to get prepared for job interviews on the outside. None of us got hired, by the way. Money smart, how to manage your money. Well, uh, of course, in small business. Leadership management. 
the real estate. Oh, this is taught this guy. <laughs> he was there for real estate fraud. He taught this course. He, he passed me another real estate. Oh, you know what? That guy was. That's a, well, there's two different guys there for real estate fraud. Uh, but one was a uh, uh, bank fraud, and he taught a real estate class. Uh, here's banking, BSI, housing, safety, money, consumers. And that was taught by another white collar weasel guy, Stock Rover. Uh, that's this mindfulness. How do you get your mind right? This was a great course, the Seven Habits. So this is like a 12 week class, uh, four hours a day, uh, twice a week. And uh, you know, in the book, Seven Habits. Uh, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. They wrote another book. Covey Jr. wrote a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People on the Inside. Made for prison inmates. And so they have a whole course on that. And, and we get the real certificate. The one that your company might pay you $1,500 to go to for the weekend. And put you up in a, seven, a seminar and get all that. Well, yeah, I got that for free. I've also got a career technical program. I got my certificate for restaurant management. I've got another culinary certificate here because uh, they have a culinary arts program. I've got my Serve Safe cer certification. It's good for five years. It's still good for four more years because I just got out a year ago. Um, and another one for restaurant management. Um, I've also got 30 years experiences a restaurant manager and a chef and I started off as a busboy and I've done everything from a waiter to a cook to a line cook to a prep cook to banquets to catering to room service you name it I've worked in hotels and restaurants and every time I got somewhere up in my career I blew it by doing drugs and alcohol and lost the job and here I am 56 years old just out of prison making a video about how hard life is for me but my point is for the guy who's out there, he, I was told by a man named Walt Pavlo, who's got lots of videos, who also went to prison. And now he is a professor at a university right outside of Boston, teaching criminology. And uh, he used to do some prison consulting. I'm not sure if he's still doing that, but I, I talked to the guy oh, every couple weeks. Um, he helped me out because he had videos on YouTube. He also put $100 on my books every month while I was in prison. I didn't have money to hire a prison consultant. And that's why I'm making these videos to give back. Um, the bottom line is, I've made this video, I don't feel so bad about myself now. I got a friend I made yesterday that's gonna go do three years at Florence Prison Camp tomorrow. And uh, I'm gonna give him a call before he goes in tonight and uh, reassure him that everything is gonna be okay. We're gonna get through this. The hard part is, you know, Accepting what you did, taking accountability, um, being honest with yourself, and, and maybe in time, trust will come back from these people, and these maybe my mom's side of the family will talk to me, maybe some friends will come back, and maybe I'll forgive them, because I also, when they leave, I get mad and angry, and, um, and maybe there's a God, and he has a plan, and he won't tell me what it is, <laughs> because if he did, it would ruin everything, um, but we do have a tough time when we get out of prison. So anybody that hasn't been to prison and you run into somebody who, who, who has been to prison, whether they're hardcore with tattoos, robbed a bank, or whether they were a doctor that gave away too many, you know, prescription for opiates, or they were a stockbroker, or they prepared false taxes like me, um, we've done our time. And it's prison, whether it's a camp or whether it's the supermax, still everything's taken away from us. We're in prison. One might be a summer vacation to some, and one might be a living hell for the other guy. But it's still prison. And at the end, we just we just want to go to work and live a life and, and be happy again. That's all I want. You know, I want to go to work. I want to have a place to live. I like to have a woman in my life. I don't know if that's going to happen because I don't want to die alone. But I do want to be a member of, of the world again. Thank you for listening.